Oh crap. This isn't good. Now what? Stick around guys. Hey, hey YouTube, welcome back to Arabin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Arabin, but you knew that, didn't you? Hey guys, today I want to talk about something that's kind of serious. And, uh, I'm not really talking about the end of the days, apocalyptic type of situation. But I am talking about an SHTF situation. More specifically, what you might want to prepare yourself for after an SHTS situation. In other words, what might you possibly encounter? We don't know. It's hypothetical to an extent. And what I mean by that is there have been SHTF situations. We've seen the aftermath of SHTF situations. We've seen things like hurricanes, tsunamis, tornadoes, earthquakes, wildfires, um, a weekend in Chicago. Uh, I, I, I joke, but I'm not. The, 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 what's going on in Chicago and a lot of these big Democrat-run cities right now is just sad. I've always said when you become a prepper or you get into prepping, prepping and preparedness, you need to prepare for what is likely to happen in your neck of the woods. Again, like I said in previous videos, for me, we have to worry about hurricanes and tornadoes primarily as far as the weather goes. Extreme heat sometimes. And of course with those come the power outages and everything that is entailed in loss of power. And uh, so today, I'm going to touch on some of the things, and I'm going to try to put a broad blanket and not be specific towards this, 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 or this. But in general, if there is a big SHTF situation, what you might expect, therefore, what you might want to start thinking about, Therefore, what you might want to start prepping for, okay? So, stick around guys and let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to Urban Outdoors. We're talking about SHTF. Now what? Alright, so uh, let's say uh, a major SHTF situation just occurred. Now what? What's going to happen? What can we rely on? What can we not rely on? What's going to happen around me? And of course this is all going to vary depending on where you live. But let's go through some of the things that can happen, okay? Hurricane, tornado, flooding, whatever. Odds are we're going to be talking about the electricity is going to be gone. Okay, so the power grid is going to stop. Alright? And if the power grid stops, a lot of things are going to be affected by that. Well, what are you talking about, Arabin? I won't have lights. No big deal. No, it goes a little further than that. But if you rely on electricity, um, odds are you rely on that for more than just lights. Uh, your refrigerator and your freezer aren't going to work. That food is eventually going to go bad. Your Water isn't going to run. I live out in the boonies. I've got a private well. But that pump is run by electricity. Imagine waking up in the morning and turning on your faucet and no water comes out. Okay? So, when we're talking about um, loss of electricity, we're talking about more than just not having lights. Alright? Uh, the electricity is going to go down everywhere. 
uh, most likely without electricity, stores are going to board up and close up. You're not going to be able to uh, do your grocery shopping. Power is going to be down, so you won't be able to use your debit card or your credit card to pay for stuff. Even if the stores are open, odds are they'll be on a cash-only basis. So it's always a good idea to have some cash stocked up. You won't be able to count on an ATM machine working. Uh, that's one of the first things people are going to do is they're going to hit the ATMs. So those ATMs are going to run out of money fast anyway. Uh, one thing you can probably expect is a, a breakdown of law enforcement. With the state of the world the way it is today and as underappreciated as police officers are, it's sad, this whole defund the police bullshit. Police officers are people too. And in a bad SHTF situation, they're going to want to take care of their families. Okay? So one, they might not be there. Two, if they are there, they're going to be so overrun with the lawlessness that's going on. Breakdown of the law, we're talking about uh, theft, we're talking about gangs on the rampage, we're talking about desperate people doing desperate things, we're talking about crazy psychotic people, uh, and just general bad people are going to take advantage of this opportunity to do what men have been doing since the beginning of time, raping, pillaging, uh, looting, um, when they can't loot the stores anymore, when they've depleted the stores, they're coming to your house, okay? They want what you got because they don't have it. And I'm not always just talking about gang members. It's very likely that otherwise normal people will have to result in doing things that they normally would not even consider doing. But, like I've always said, in desperate times, desperate people will do desperate things. And people are going to do what they have to do to survive. And when we have a breakdown of the law, and there is no law enforcement, you're living in a lawless society, there are no repercussions, people are going to do what they feel they have to do to survive. If that means bringing harm to you and yours, to get what you have, so they can survive, that's what they're going to do. So, you have to be ready for that. Self-defense, guns, ammo. you got to be able to protect yourself and your household. You can also, we talked about uh, kind of the, the lack of electricity, no water. There's going to be a breakdown in sanitation, okay? When the water goes down, shortly to follow is going to be the sewage systems. And we've seen evidence in the past, uh, after natural disasters, where cities have accidentally had to dispose of sewage into rivers and streams. Um, it's going to be an ugly sight. But the breakdown of sanitation uh, is also going to lead to uh, the diseases that come from uh, the lack of sanitation. So uh, you need to be prepared for that. You need to have plenty of bleach, disinfectant, soap, alcohol, and uh, sanitizer. Um, have all that stuff backed up. Uh, trash bags and a Home Depot bucket for taking care of your excrement, what to do with that after the immediate uh, solution. You gotta think long term, where's that gonna go? You don't wanna just pile that stuff up in your house cause that's gonna create all kind of problems. Insects, rodents, all that sort of stuff. So sanitation and the breakdown of sanitation can lead to a lot of horrific disease and um, you know uh, it, it could go back to the dark ages guys unless you're prepared to handle it 
and you do so properly, you're not going to be able to rely on the public sanitation department. We don't have it out where I live, but if you live in the city or if you live in a subdivision, you take it for granted. You just put your trash in this little bin and a couple times a week a truck comes by and takes it out of your sight and out of your mind. Well, what's going to happen when those trash trucks stop running? What are you going to do with your rubbish? Again, you don't want to just leave it piling up in your house because that's going to create bugs, insects, uh, rodents. That's going to create disease. So think about sanitation when we have a breakdown of sanitation. What are you going to do? Touched on it a little bit earlier with the ATMs, but we're talking about a possible, uh, probable economic crash. Okay? Um, there will be a point, like I say, where the ATMs, if they're working, they're already going to be exhausted of money. The banks aren't going to be open because banks are all relying on electricity. So your debit card, your credit card, and at some point even your cash are going to be useless. Okay? So what are you going to do? To get what you need well start thinking about bartering long term that's what it could very well end up being you're gonna have to trade uh, barter items we just saw this last year with this COVID uh, pandemic how many of you went to the grocery store found no toilet paper no Lysol spray no alcohol no bleach food was even in short supply. Shelves were empty. With an economic crash, the first thing people are going to do is they're going to hit those grocery stores and those Walmarts. And after two or three days, those stores are going to be empty. After two or three days, what isn't already purchased will most likely have been looted and stolen. So just think about what you're going to do with no debit card, no credit card, no cash. What do you have that you could barter, that you could trade, okay? You want to think about things that people will need. All right, guys, so supply trucks are going to stop running. The logistics are not going to be to, uh, there to support them to continue uh, making their runs. Uh, without electricity, um, gas stations, all right? Uh, you've seen this in natural disasters. I had to experience it myself back in, uh, was it 2016 or 17? I was at the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston, South Carolina. And I was undergoing my seven weeks of radiation for my thyroid cancer. Hurricane Matthew came through, and we had to evacuate. It took me what normally takes two hours to get from Charleston to my house. It took six hours because the interstates were backed up. Uh, every gas station was packed. The majority of them were closed because they had already run out of gas. All right, so if they're, if, and this is before the hurricane even hit. So imagine afterwards. Uh, afterwards, by the by the time it's already happened, they're probably out of gas. Without gas stations and without gas, the trucks aren't going to be able to run to supply the stores with the stuff that you take for granted every day. Just right off grocery stores, okay? Now, I'm not saying if a SHTF situation happens and you're not prepared, don't try to go to the grocery store, but if you do, I'd go packing. Because it's not going to be a pretty scene, and it's not a scene you want to be at. So, best to just be prepared, not have to worry about doing that anyway. A lot of people just aren't going to go to work. Um, and can you blame them? And at some point in a long-term SHTS situation, this is going to boil down to first responders as well. 
eventually there's going to be a point where police officers, paramedics, firemen, they're going to see the survival of their family uh, outweighing their duty to the general public. And uh, the way we treat police officers now, can you blame them? Uh, another thing a lot of people don't think about that's going to happen after an SHTS situation is communication. Cell towers are going to be down. I mean, you're not going to have your cell phone. Hard lines, if you even have those anymore, uh, probably aren't going to work. So communication is going to be, if not impossible, very difficult. Infrastructure on a whole is basically going to be non-reliant. And that's why I say people that live in the cities are going to be more affected. How many people live in these big cities don't even own a vehicle? Taxi drivers, bus drivers, again, they're going to be attending to their family, okay? Um, I doubt anybody's going to be operating their Uber business in a post-SHTS situation. Uh, public transit probably is going to be inoperable anyway if you have to rely on a subway or train type of system. How are you going to get out if you have to get out? These are all things that we need to be thinking about, guys. I mean, the trucks aren't going to be running. The stores aren't going to have what we need. Cash, credit cards, debit cards are going to be useless. The infrastructure isn't going to work. Communication isn't going to work. The last thing I'll talk about, and I kind of touched on it already, is just personal security. Um, secure your property and your home and be prepared to defend it. These are all things that we can kind of anticipate or we should be anticipating after an SHTS situation. And uh, if you anticipate these things and you prepare for them and they never happen, that's great. But if it does happen and you've anticipated and you've prepared and you're ready, you'll be in a much better situation than most. There's a lot to consider, a lot to think about, a lot to anticipate. Do we know exactly how it's going to go down? No. I think that we need to anticipate as many of these situations as we can. Just go ahead and expect these situations to happen afterwards and prepare for them now so that when it happens, you won't be that desperate person doing those but desperate things. But if you start thinking about these things now, you start anticipating them, start expecting them, start preparing for them. As you do that, it's going to help your mindset to shift. And it's going to help your mindset to accept, while I normally wouldn't do this, in this situation, this is what I got to do. Thanks for coming along on the Urban Outdoors, guys. I really appreciate you being here. Till next time, keep calm, carry on, keep it outdoors.